Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a 2011 American superhero action movie called The Green Hornet. The movie begins with a young rich boy named Brit whose father, James Reed, is the owner of the Daily Sentinel. Turns out that Brit was sent home by his teachers after a schoolyard fight. He admits that he tries to defend himself from the bullies, but the father does not believe him and gets angry. He takes his most favorite superhero figure and pulls out its head. 20 years later, Benjamin Chudnovsky, the mafia boss who is LA under his command, comes to a bar to give a warning to its owner, Danny Clear, because he opened the bar without his permission and payment. However, the bar owner disrespects him and deliberately mispronounces his name into Tchaikovsky. He then states that Chudnovsky is old-fashioned and is not scary anymore. Since Benjamin is a psychopath who always wants to be feared by everyone, he feels insulted with that statement. He immediately pulls out his gun and starts shooting at his bodyguards, killing them on the spot. He points his two-barreled gun at Danny's head while asking him whether he is scary or not. Left with no choice, Danny admits that Benjamin is scary, but he suggests he changes his name to a scarier name. Benjamin accepts the suggestion and calmly walks out of the building. Just after Danny thinks that he's safe, he finds a briefcase, which is actually a bomb, and the mafia boss subsequently blows up the whole bar. Meanwhile, Brit, who is now a grown-up man, is jobless and spends his whole day partying with girls. He lives in his dad's luxurious mansion and every morning, he is always served a good cup of coffee. Not long after, James appears and expresses his disappointment towards his one and only son, who has been humiliating him through his inappropriate behavior. One day, while having fun with girls, Brit receives devastating news. The media reports that his father, James, has been found dead from an allergic reaction to a bee sting. To honor his dedication as an honest and kind person, James' friends and colleagues built him a statue. After the funeral, Brit, who is lost and is not ready for the big responsibility, fires most of his father's staff. The next morning, Brit is disappointed when his morning coffee doesn't taste as good as usual. He complains to the only remaining maid and orders her to call the barista back. Kato, the barista who also used to be James' car mechanic, returns to the mansion and shows Brit the machine he always uses to make the coffee. Brit is amazed when he sees the very advanced coffee machine and Kato admits that he built the machine single-handedly. Because of Kato's amazing skill, Brit becomes eager to get to know more about him. Kato tells Brit that he's born in Shanghai and lived in an orphanage since he was four. He then ran away and lived on the street while working as a mechanic until James came to his garage to fix his car. James was happy with his work at that time and decided to recruit him. After that, Kato takes Brit to James' garage where he shows him James' bulletproof car, which of course was also built by Kato. They subsequently go to Kato's personal workshop where he reveals to Brit his drawings and skill to open beer bottles with bare hands. They get drunk and Brit tells Kato about how much he hates his father for ripping off his favorite toy's head. Still that night, they go to the graveyard and Brit decides to cut off the statue's head for revenge. As he walks back to the car, Brit accidentally sees a couple getting mugged by gangsters. He attempts to save them, but gets beaten up until Kato appears and fights them. While fighting, it turns out that Kato possesses a unique ability that allows him to see things in a slow mode when his heart starts pumping fast. After eliminating all the gangsters, they drive away, but later realize that they're being chased by the police, who think that they're criminals. Because they keep refusing to pull over, the officer shoots them, but deals no effect to the side window. Kato eventually activates the car's secret weapon which allows them to entirely escape from the cop. In the mansion, they celebrate their success and Brit suggests they team up to fight crime in the city. Kato initially hesitates with the idea as the news reports them as the bad guy, but Brit manages to convince him, telling him to utilize his talents for the greater good, despite the fact that they will be targeted by both the cops and criminals. The next day, they come to his company HQ and Brit orders the manager to make his statue head cutting action as the headline on the newspaper so that people will think that he is dangerous. Since the staff have no idea that Brit is the culprit, they decide to call the man as the Green Hornet, which is inspired from the bee that killed James. The Green Hornet becomes viral and this news affects the reputation of DA Scanlon as the media thinks that the city is not safe anymore. On the other hand, Benjamin also learns about the Green Hornet and is offended by the fact that someone is scarier than him. Back at the office, Cato meets Lenore, who is the temp for Brit's secretarial position. Brit interviews her and immediately decides to hire her as his permanent secretary after knowing that she understands criminology. In the evening, Cato develops a more advanced car for them while Brit determines which costume they should wear. The mechanic equips the car with rudels, some modern weapons, and last but not least, ejector seats. 
Several weeks have passed and Brit is amazed by the fact that Kato manages to transform an old car into an imperial car. While testing their brand new car, Brit calls Lenore, asking her to send the crime maps that'll be used to determine the best location for their debut as the Green Hornet. As they arrive at the most dangerous place in the city, they confront the local gangsters and challenge them. Kato does a 360 spin, hitting the gangsters with the car, before they get out and start knocking them out one by one. Brit then interrogates one of the thugs, who reveals that they work for Benjamin. They even break into Benjamin's meth lab where Brit tells the worker to give the Green Hornet card to his boss. The next day, the guy gives the card to Benjamin and claims that they're scarier than him, which makes the boss feel insulted and then shoots him to death. Meanwhile, Brit urges his employees to promote the Green Hornet with provoking lines. Since then, Brit and Cato keep eliminating the criminals while causing chaos in the city, making the cops, DA Scanlon, and Benjamin are after them at the same time. Realizing that Brit doesn't have much fighting experience, Cato gives him a gas gun, but he thinks that it's insulting. He then accidentally shoots the gas gun in his face which makes him unconscious for 11 days. As Brit awakens, he's surprised when finding out that Cato has built two backup cars and has fixed the gas, shortening its effect to only last for one hour. He then shoots Cato with a gas gun. Back to Benjamin, his men inform him that his subordinates think that their boss is not that powerful anymore and most of them decide to be independent. To regain his popularity, Benjamin plans to kill the Green Hornet. He subsequently sends Cato and Brit an email, asking them to meet up to discuss a business opportunity. Cato thinks that it's a trap, but Brit becomes too selfish and insists with his plan. The following day, they rendezvous with Benjamin as planned, but they later realize that they have fallen into Benjamin's trap. He attempts to bury them alive along with the car. Cato launches the missiles which eventually prevent them from being buried alive while also killing one of Benjamin's friends, Chili. They then manage to escape from the site and take a taxi home. Upon returning to the mansion, Cato is unhappy with Benjamin's behavior and they both start arguing. Brit claims that he's the real hero and Cato is just his sidekick, not partner. On the contrary, Cato tells him that he's nothing without him. They later fight until Brit finds out that Cato can't swim and decides to throw him afloat, then leaves him alone. After that, he angrily fires both Cato and Lenore. On the other hand, Benjamin is very devastated after losing one of his comrades and is willing to give $1 million to anyone who can bring the Green Hornet to him, dead or alive. The words are spread among the criminals in the city, causing a lot of innocent people who wear green clothes to be ruthlessly killed. The manager shows Brit the consequence of putting the Green Hornet as headline and politely asks him to stay out his way in managing the company. Left with no option, Brit meets up with DA Scanlon to get some help. Instead, he finds out that Scanlon is corrupt after the DA attempts to bribe him to slant the news for his re-election, which is rejected by Brit. Meanwhile, Benjamin is planning to change his name from Chudnovsky into Bloodnovsky, hoping that will increase his charisma, but it seems like his friend is against that idea. Thus, Benjamin shoots him and announces his new name to the others. Back to Brit, he comes to Lenore and asks him to work for him again. Shortly after, Scanlon invites Brit for dinner to renegotiate, to which he agrees. Meanwhile, Cato accidentally finds out that the dinner is a trap and immediately drives over to the restaurant. At the restaurant, Scanlon reveals to Brit that he and Benjamin are allies and they both have a mutualistic relationship. He also adds that he was the one who murdered his father by injecting apotoxin, which is commonly found in a bee sting, after he refused to corporate. Unbeknownst to Scanlon, Brit has recorded all their conversations from the beginning. Not long after, Cato comes to the rescue and the gunfight ensues. Thanks to the missile from the car, they both manage to escape from the restaurant and drive away. At the same time, Benjamin picks Scanlon up and they start chasing after them. After a long chase and dozens of bullets being fired, Brit and Cato manage to destroy several Benjamin's men's cars and eventually manage to break into the Daily Sentinel's HQ where Brit intends to upload the conversations onto the internet. However, the car is stuck in the printing machine, forcing Brit to run to his office by foot. Benjamin, who is now wearing a red suit and gas mask, attempts to shoot Brit, but he escapes by jumping to the ground floor. Benjamin and his men continue chasing him until he's cornered. Luckily, the car breaks free from the printing machine and Cato immediately picks him up. They then crash into an elevator and somehow manage to ascend to the highest level of the building. Since the car was built with a front-wheel drive system, they still can drive the car until they arrive at Brit's office, only to find out that the conversation was not recorded as he forgot to press the play button. At the same time, Cato tries to buy some time by fighting Benjamin and his men himself, but unfortunately he gets his leg pinned underneath the table. When Benjamin is about to kill Cato, 
Brit somehow suddenly possesses the same time freezing ability as Kato and starts eliminating everyone. This action distracts Benjamin for a second and Kato uses this opportunity to break free and subsequently impales the mafia boss in the eyes. A SWAT team shows up and fires at the Green Hornet, hitting Brit in the shoulder. They get into their half-destroyed car, hit Scanlan with it, and drive off the building while they escape through the ejector seats. The two flee to Lenore's place where they have to reveal their identity to her so that she wants to help them. The next day, Brit announces to the public that he wants to rebuild the new Sentinel and promotes the manager as the new chief editor. In an attempt to convince the public that he's not the Green Hornet, he plans a scenario with Kato where he pretends to get shot by the Green Hornet while also allowing him to be taken to the hospital. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.